the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help comes from the Lord who created this beautiful earth and who keeps covenant and steadfast love forever. Good morning. Good morning. It is our good morning. It is our first Sunday that we worship in somehow a different way, where we cannot be gathered here today physically because COVID-19 is still with us and we all stay in our safe spaces and safe places so that we are not sharing the germs with one another, but love. And so I'm delighted, and we are delighted today here. Um, Terrell, who is playing the piano, Daniel, who is recording together with Vincent, and we have Don with us today here too. So we five are delighted to worship with you in this different way, but the Spirit will unite us today while we are here in this hour of service. So if you're ready, please join me into the call to worship. God, sometimes the days are long, the nights are even longer, and we are so tired with all the chaos around us. And then you soothe us and bring us to gentle places. You are our shepherd, and we are your sheep. Right now, life is moving so fast, changing every minute, and we can find a moment to breathe. And then you surround us with stillness and bring an even rhythm to our breath. You are our shepherd and we are your sheep. Sometimes we are parched and it seems nothing will quench our thirst. We are famished and we can't find anything to eat. And then you refresh and you fill us. You are our shepherd, and we are your sheep. Right now, the valley is dark, and the shadows are long, and we are afraid. But then we feel your strength, and we have courage. You are our shepherd, and we are your sheep. We will praise you and dwell with you forever, O oh God. We will worship you this day and always. So let us sing our hymn, our first one for the day, and please join us while Terrell and I will sing. We want to hear you singing as well in your safe places, wherever you are, on your desk or on your couch or your kitchen table. We want to, that you join us to sing, and our song is today, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Take from us the tension that makes peace impossible. Take from us 
us the fears that do not allow us to live our lives as you intended us to live. Take from us the worries that blind our sights. Take from us the distress that hides your joy. Help us to know that we are with you, that we are in your care, that we are in your love, and that you and us are one. Amen. God longs for us to sit by the still waters of love, but we are too busy right now with our own worries. God, help us to calm down and hear our hearts. Put aside our worries to fully concentrate on you. We are coming with our prayers to you, saying together the prayer of confession. So let us all join and say, Loving God, we sit in the ashes of our hopes, yet you look at us with love and admiration. The world around us changes. We had plans now all put on hold. We feel the inconvenience, we complain, yet we know that we have to protect the weak, the vulnerable, the people we love. Have mercy on us, God of forgiveness, and open our eyes to your presence among us. As you look at our hearts, may we see others in a different way, not as enemies or strangers or as an inconvenience, but as sisters and brothers of the same family, kin to Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. The Spirit of the Lord has come upon us, bringing hope, life, and forgiveness for each person. This forgiveness opened our hearts to see everybody as our friend and neighbor. So believe the good news in and through Jesus Christ. We are forgiven and we are made new. Thanks be to God. Amen. So with you. Now let us all join into the prayer of illumination. Jesus, you are the light of the world. Shine your light in us today. Chase away the darkness of sin, the darkness of fear and doubt and despair. Let us with the light of your truth and your word. Teach us what is pleasing to you. Make us a shining example of your amazing grace. Redeeming love and life-changing power. Amen. Amen. When I started to prepare this service, which of course I've never done before thinking that we would do this online, I usually follow when I do my preparations the uh, common lectionary, the Revised Common Lectionary, which suggests us four scriptures 
percentage to Old Testament and to from the New Testament. And in those cases, I usually go with it because I don't decide that I preach my favorite uh, scripture to you all the time and you're getting tired of me hearing all the time the same thing. This common lectionary challenges me to talk about scripture texts that maybe I would want to avoid. So it's a good thing to follow um, the suggestion to see where that leads us and not where I want to go. But when I prepared it for this week, I thought we are in a very special situation. Um, we are separated physically and hopefully not spiritually. That's why we are gathered here via online service and through CD, listening to CD, that yet we are united in spirit. So I thought maybe I have to choose a text that speaks more into our situation, into the crisis that we are all in, in this uncertainty. And then I decided, no, I will see what the Revised Common Lectionary has to offer. And there I was surprised how God works in all those mysterious ways, because for today, Psalm 23 is the Old Testament text that the Common Lectionary wanted to suggest or has suggested. And I thought, what a beautiful, beautiful text that speaks into this crisis, which we usually say when we are in a crisis. This psalm that is such comforting text and words where we feel that God is the shepherd and we are the sheep. And what else do we need to know right now in this crisis that God is our shepherd and we are God's sheep. So whatever happens to us, we are embedded in a flock that is led by the Great Shepherd. So let us say our text, our scripture today together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff that comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the day of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, COVID-19, this virus, puts us into a very odd and unknown situation that I at least have never been in before, where I have to keep a social distance to the people that I love dearly, where I cannot hug the people that I really feel that I want to hug. And as a hugger, I really have a hard time right now. I feel that this physical touch that um, is my way to show other people how I care, um, that I cannot do that. This virus has put our lives on hold and caused a lot of uncertainty, anger, fear, some crises that we all have to face. And Psalm 23 is actually a psalm that David, I feel, wrote in a crisis himself, where he himself dwelled in a valley of a shadow that he maybe didn't know how to get out when he then wrote those words down. And like every uh, one who writes poems or short stories knows that you start writing something and then you revise it and you start writing again and you form your text. I feel that David did that here as well. And I wonder what kind of crisis David was in. Maybe it was one of those many wars that he fought and maybe he realized on the road that the wars were more about his own power and seeking power over others than really following the word of the Lord while he was sending his own soldiers into death to go into a relationship with a woman, where David a lot did a lot that he probably wasn't proud of. Maybe it was one of those crises where he felt that his own desire for power and might was not what God intended him to do as the king of Israel. Maybe it was one of those moments where he started to doubt if his path of righteousness was the right one. 
Interestingly, Psalm 23 starts out where I feel David is at the beginning of his crisis, where he is at the beginning where he says, the Lord is my shepherd, where the Lord is still standing far away and David stands here, where we have a third person singular saying, God is my shepherd, I shall not want. Where I feel there is not yet the intimacy we hear when we think of Psalm 23, this reassuring, wonderful, giving fuzzies, where we think, wow, that is such a loving, intimate psalm that gives us the feeling that we really belong to God. And yet, David starts out with saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I feel that this is the first sentence maybe he wrote, where he himself didn't feel that he is not yet really in a relationship with God, where the relationship is still right there. Right there, God is here and I am here. And whatever is in between is not yet clear. Where he makes me lay down in green pastures, yet not this intimate moment of relationship, of getting into and really and truly surrender to God's love and care, a distance. And maybe when we go through our crises, maybe we are in that distance as well, because we all deal with those crises differently. And when we look deep down in us, honestly, maybe this crisis brought to light some ways that we were hoping we wouldn't have those traits and sides within us. Where we are running to the stores because we are hoping to get the last roll of toilet paper, a last sanitizing whatever so that the other doesn't get it, that I can say, I hold food or whatever, not as much caring about the other. Maybe I'm angry. I'm angry about this virus. I'm angry about all the people telling me that I cannot live my life right now because this life put on hold so much right now that our everyday living, we cannot visit our friends and families, we cannot gather as a church right now because we put other people in harm's way. That upsets us. And that is understandable. And yet we feel this. Maybe we are not proud of this. Where family members try to visit other people in nursing homes and they only can see each other through a window and they cannot touch themselves or touch them anymore. They cannot talk one-on-one, -on -one, where we feel we leave them behind and where the most vulnerable people, the sick and the people who are of age, we cannot be with them because we are afraid to pass something on that makes them sick, that would harm them. And we are so inconvenienced by all of this because our everyday life just stopped. And we have to adjust to something new that we really don't really grasp for what's worth and what for. So many questions. Maybe there is this distance between me and the virus, me and God, the right thing to do. And then in the song, something changes. All of a sudden, David turns to God and refers to God as you. I fear no evil for you are with me. All of a sudden this far away God that stands maybe over there and David stands over here and there's no intimate relationship changes because David realizes this that whatever is going on, whatever he experienced maybe as a king of Israel, not doing the right thing, that God is with him, and that he doesn't have to fear anything, that he is okay to change, to go back into the righteous way that God intended him to walk and lead Israel into. That something changed, where David maybe realized that his mind and power it's not the right mind and power. That only when he surrenders into this relationship with the Good Shepherd, when he really completely surrenders, even as a king, acknowledging that his kingship is less than God, that even a king depends on God and God's advice and leadership, when David became that humble 
acknowledging that whatever he thought as the king is the right thing and and to foster his own power and mind is not God's path. When he surrendered, God became the, from the abstract, God somewhere there to this personal relationship. David no longer talked about God. He went into a community with God, a communion with God. A communion where David realized as a shepherd, he used to be a shepherd before he was a king, where he realized that he has to give up his leadership and let the good shepherd lead. And where he realized that he is a sheep depending on the good shepherd. And maybe that is something that we all can have as an advice, how we walk through this crisis. So that it's no longer about us and what we want and what we think is most convenient for us, but that we are surrendering into God's leadership and that the Good Shepherd will lead us through this, that he, God will see us through this valley of shadows where we have to keep our distance so that everybody is protected and that we're not putting anybody in harm's way where we feel that God will lead us through. As a good shepherd, there is this green pasture at the end where we all will gather together. But that means that we have to think about as a flock now how to be together in this, how we walk with each other through this valley of shadows that God lead us through and how we can be there for one another as a flock to call one another and say, I'm just checking in and say, hi, how are you doing? Because we cannot gather social isolation, emotional isolation, and spiritual isolation. I think those are the things that we are facing right now. And that is the question, and that is the challenge. Where will God lead us? How we can be there for one another as a flock, calling each other, checking in, is helping to get the people out of isolation and emotional isolation. And then ask. How are you doing? Can I do something for you? And can I pray for you? Do you have a prayer request? Let me know. Or let us pray on this phone together. Coming up with ideas how we can be there. As a church, we try to provide you all with, with material for your own study so that at home you feel you can be together, united by spirit, by studying together the Sunday school material. I try to put other things online for you and send out via email and even say email to help and be there for one another. Let us be creative. How we all walk through this valley of shadows together where the Good Shepherd leads us. And then we will meet us again in the green pastures where the table is set in, in front of the enemy of the coronavirus, where the table is set where we are coming together knowing that we defeated this crisis, that we were able to walk together through this crisis because we surrendered ourselves to this good shepherd like David did, allowing ourselves to be humble knowing that God needs us and God is in charge and that God will see us through this crisis. And then one day we will gather here again in the green pastures where we all will celebrate together as one flock again, the Good Shepherd, who led us through there. But until then, let us all have us in prayer, reach out to one another, and find ways how we can be there as a flock for one another. So don't get discouraged. Look up and know that God walks with us, with you through the valleys of shadows, until we all are at the end, united again as one flock with the shepherd, we have St. Paul's, or wherever your physical church is, so that we all celebrate and worship our God. Amen.
his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now I would like to sing with you the next hymn, Why Should He Love Me So? And remember, sing with us. Carol and I, we need a lot of support, so we want to hear you singing, Why Should He Love Me So? What, what number is it? Wisdom, 
how it will protect us. That the virus is not the only thing going around. We all have our everyday struggles. Be with us there. Be with us in the struggles and the challenges, in our joys and our concerns. New life comes into this world and life goes out. With joy we receive the new life and with sad hearts, but we are sure of knowing that they arrive into our eternal kingdom, that you embrace them by your love and with your love. We can let them go. Everything we do, every breath we take is within you. Knowing that you protect us, that you lead us as a good shepherd, we lift up our hearts in the one prayer that you taught us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Let us say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this point, our service would call for your offering. And we're not skipping this part because you think you're at home, so nobody can come around with a plate. No, 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 no. As we are creative how to reach you online, there are also different ways how you can give back. Because in all of this, we can be most grateful to be safe at home, being able to gather this way with one another. And whatever we do here, St. Paul's, even though we are not physically here together, we are still doing our work. Our work to serve this community, our work to reach you wherever you are, so that you feel that we are, that God is with you. So we are asking for your offering so that we can do our everyday work as St. Paul's. And there are different ways to do that. First of all, you're already online, just you're already on our website. There is a donation button. Just click on it and this button will lead you, lead you through this how you can give online. And then there are the traditional ways you can stop at the office. Our office hours are as usual. Come stop by and drop off your offering. Or you can even mail it in and we receive it. So there are still different ways and there are ways open how we can give so that we can continue to do the work that St. Paul does here in this community, in the world, and for one another. So we are asking now for your offering. And while you're pondering about how you want to give, let us join our hearts in the prayer of dedication. All that we have, all that we give this day, Holy One, already belongs to you. Bless these gifts and give us vision to use them to glorify you. Amen. Now we are at the point where we do our announcements and joys and concerns. First of all, the announcement is that we don't have our fundraiser, but we will do our raffle ticket drawing on the 29th. So stay tuned, come and visit our website, go on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, you will see and we, there we will announce the winners and we will contact the winners. So you don't need to be present. We will do the drawing anyways, um, so that at least a part of our fundraiser uh, can come true and we will let you know when our fundraiser will take place because right now it is postponed till until further notice. As it is with our worship service, as long as you don't hear otherwise, come meet us next Sunday and the following Sundays. I hope that we are not looking into a lot of Sundays but to worship this way. But um, check out our uh, website, our Facebook web, um, page and see what's going on or call in into the office and ask what is going on so that you and I, we are together and we all worship together and be together as one community of faith. And another announcement, our, uh, hopefully some of you um, 
have received uh, via email our Sunday school material so that you can do your study on your own. Our Sunday to school teachers agree to email out some materials so that you can continue your study at your own. And if you have questions or comments, either contact the Sunday school teacher directly or send it to me and I will pass this on so that we are in somehow our dialogue. Or do the old fashioned way call and say, hey, I have a question, I have a comment, or can we discuss this for a moment? I'm sure they don't mind to be in that conversation with you. Our Bible study will happening at 3 p.m. today here at the church. They will uh, either congregate here in our little foyer at the, in front of the sanctuary um, or at the uh, secretary's office, depending. Um, and good news also, so please come, and you also hopefully received in the package that we sent out um, the material that they will study today. So read it and come and join at 3 p.m. today. And good news, as, as much as we are all with the coronavirus going on, we are in full swing with um, the remodeling, the renovation. There are a lot of things changing. Kathy and I, we <laughs> sat this week and the jackhammer was going on and took out the concrete and cement and it was really exciting to hear that things are happening. So soon we will send and put online uh, pictures so that you can see the changes. So it's exciting. I mean, okay, the, uh, the virus is there, but there are exciting news going on as well. If you have joys and concerns, please let me know. Uh, either you call me or the office, you email me or the office, and let us know so that next Sunday I can share your joys and concerns. I share a joy that I just received yesterday. I'm an aunt for the third time. My brother and his wife, they have a baby boy, and we are so delighted, and it's a cute little fella and just the cutest noises. So we have them in your prayers that as a young uh, family growing now together, it's their first child, that they know that you are with them and that you pray for them. So that is my joy that I want to share with you. If you have other joys and concerns, let me know, and I will add them next Sunday to all our joys and concerns. Now, with all that being said, let's get out our song and let us sing our next and last hymn for today, sent forth by God's blessing. Jesus be the cornerstone of your life and may the Holy Spirit 